The idea that I've been trying to get over since I started back in 1938 is still new. It comes as a shock to anyone who hears it. And even after you've heard it for years and years and think you're living by it, I've discovered that one is not really living by it. It has not yet become a part of their thinking. And it is that imagining creates reality. I say this because I identify imagining with God in action. To me, man is all imagination, and God is man, and exists in us, and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination, and that is God himself. If by God I mean the creator of the universe, the maker and the master of the whole vast universe, and I identify that creator with the human imagination, then man should be more careful as to what he is imagining. So I can give lip service to the statement, imagining creates reality. And yet if I'm observant in the course of a day, if I observe what I'm imagining, I would find unnumbered moments in my life, in one 24 hours or other, the waking 18, where I am imagining things I do not wish to experience. If I really believed that imagining creates reality, I would be more careful, more concerned about what I am imagining. So I will give it lip service and say imagining creates reality and go blindly on imagining anything other than what I want to create beginning with the morning paper and reacting to things that you do not know, whether they be true, they could be planted by some press agent, planted by some lobbyist you do not know. And here we react as we read, and then we go through the life in just 24 hours and find that most of the 24 hours we spend imagining what we do not wish to experience. If men would only look upon the world as a world of appearance, behind which the reality of imagining lay, he would find the truth. He would find God. A friend of mine up in San Francisco. She was a friend of a mutual friend, and they didn't get on very well, only at moments. One night, riding with her, we went down, or maybe... 75 miles down the peninsula for a dinner, lovely dinner, and all the way back, this very, very heavy fog, you could hardly see a few yards before you. And she was talking of this friend of mine, who she claimed to be a friend of hers. And she would rant against this woman, so and so and so, I wouldn't even print it, you couldn't print it, it burned the page. And then at the end of her statement, she would say, God bless her soul. <laughs> She kept up the entire 75 miles, blasting this woman, and then she would qualify the whole thing, and it's all forgiven. God bless her soul. So, she is still here. The other one has gone from this little section of time, and she is still playing the same part. Using her imagination in every way she doesn't want in this world. And things went from bad to worse in her world. And they're still that way. And she can't for one moment believe she is the cause of the phenomena of her life. Oh no, she can't for one moment. And yet I had one long 75 mile drive with her. Well, it would take a whole lifetime to reap that harvest. But she said in that long uh, drive from dinner back home. So man has a very weak memory and he doesn't remember when he did these things. But there's a depth in man. Who does not forget? Be it warned in Galatians, be not deceived. God is not mocked. As a man sows, so shall he reap. 